All right, let's take out a piece of paper and I would like you to write down these two questions. I know, uh, I know uh, Thanksgiving break has a, has a wonderful ability to brainwash part of your memory. So I just wanna make sure that uh, you can still remember some uh, key values. And uh, these two values are particularly important in terms of um, your graphs. So, yeah, so I can uh, go ahead and write down these two questions uh, and leave some space in between because uh, we might need to draw some pictures to explain, to prove why it is such. All right, so why is sine zero? And by the way, I didn't put a degree sign right here. That means it is an in radian. So sine zero, it's equal to zero. Why is that? Okay. Now, if you use the unit circle, you would probably say, oh, because at zero radian, the y value is zero. But again, here, I would like you to think about this without using the unit circle. I can give you a hint. My hint is sine theta is what? Over opposite over uh, hypotenuse, right? Sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's my hint. All right. See if you can uh, figure this one out. Yes, Nietzsche. Say again. The opposite is what? The, the hypotenuse would be one because the radius is one. Okay. Okay, so we can actually uh, make a triangle to make this a more generic case. So what you can do is to draw a right triangle. Okay. And this would be our little theta angle. And uh, we can also label uh, these sides opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Now, and uh, I think I would have an advantage using my iPad to, uh, to show you this triangle over using a piece of paper because uh, I can actually show you the change of this angle. Now, if you could look at the screen, what I'm gonna do is this. I am going to decrease the theta. So now, what can you say about the length of the opposite side as the theta decreases? It also, decrease, it also decreases, right? And if theta goes all the way to zero, what can we say about the length of the opposite side? Zero, right? So now let's, uh, let's write down. So we can say S theta equal to zero. Okay, we can conclude a few things. Well, for one thing we can conclude is that the opposite side would also become zero. Do we still have a hypotenuse? We still have a hypotenuse. It's just that the opposite side becomes zero. And since, hey, sine theta, it's what? Opposite of a hypotenuse, right? So sine zero, it's gonna be, now let me go ahead and put a stroke for zero. So that, uh, well, actually uh, you can tell that I'm not using, I'm not writing the, uh, the <laughs> I'm not writing the O, so uh, zero over some hypotenuse. Okay, it could be one, 
it could be anything and zero over anything is zero okay so sine zero sine zero it's zero over something so that's why uh sine zero is zero so what i'm trying to do here is that you yes you have one way to tell sine zero is zero by using your unit circle i want to prep you with another way so that you can tell you can verify yourself that hey if you think about a triangle if the angle is zero you don't really have an opposite side so sine zero is zero now let's go back to this triangle one more time and as the angle goes smaller and smaller and smaller what can you say about the hypotenuse and the adjacent side they what the same right so uh they become exactly the same so we can say that uh, the second conclusion we can make is that as theta becomes zero the adjacent side is the same as the the hypotenuse and that's why well cosine zero it's uh, cosine zero is adjacent over hypotenuse and at zero those two are the same which will cancel each other out and that's why we have one any question behind the logic okay any question about this thought process on how to prove cosine of zero is actually one so unit circle is one way to uh to to get you the value the triangle is another way to get you the value we're good <laughs> If there's no question, I uh, can uh, flip to the next page, okay, if you uh, need more space, but uh, I will need you to draw this triangle. Now, please draw this triangle uh, at least half of the size of your palm, okay? Draw it a little bit bigger. Uh, I don't want it to be uh, too small. It's kind of hard to, uh, to look at it, okay? Uh, I don't want to draw the triangle as the size of your thumb. That's uh, too small to see. So let's go ahead and draw this triangle. And after you finish drawing this triangle, label them. And uh, after you finish labeling them, go ahead and answer the following question. What is sine theta and what is cosine theta? Okay, using uh, these uh, ABC, okay, these labels. What's sine theta and what's cosine theta? Theta. So what's sine theta? A over C. Cosine theta. B over C. Fairly easy, right? All right, now let's do something a little, just a little bit more challenging. Just a little bit. Now, if you look at this triangle, how would you label this angle? This angle right here, how would you label it? Yeah, louder. 90 minus theta. When did you learn this? At least, well, I mean, geometry, of course, right? Or maybe even earlier. 
the moment when you learn that uh, all the angles inside a triangle should add up to 180, right? So just subtract 90, subtract theta, you get 90 minus theta. So now if you look at this, if you're okay with this labeling, 90 minus theta, 90 degrees minus theta, uh, what is uh, the cosine of this angle? Cosine of uh, 90 degrees minus theta, what is the cosine of this angle? Louder? A over C, right? So let me write this down. Uh, cosine of uh, this angle, 90 degrees minus theta, is A over C. And uh, what about the sine of this angle? Sine of 90 degrees minus theta. B over C, right? Sine of uh, 90 degrees minus theta, B over C. And uh, can you see something? Can you see something that I purposely arranged it for you? That sine theta, it's A over C. Cosine of 90 degrees minus theta, it's A over C. And you might have seen something already, actually, when you were memorizing your unit circle. Did you realize that uh, sine 45 degrees, it's always equals to cosine of 45 degrees? Which is both root two over two, right? Did you realize that sine 30 degrees, it's equal to cosine of? 60 degrees, which they're both, they're both one half, okay? And what about uh, sine of 60 degrees? It's always equal to cosine of 30 degrees, they're both root three over two, okay? So uh, root three over two. So, so these are all from your unit circle. So we can write down a relationship. The sine theta, it's equal to cosine of 90 degrees minus theta. And of course we can change the 90 degrees to uh, pi over two if we wanna do it in radians. And, uh, and the reverse is true. Cosine theta, it's equal to sine of 90 degrees minus theta. And uh, that's something that we learned, we know about co-functions. Okay. So, so uh, this is just a little bit of a refreshing of your old stuff from the previous unit. Uh, and uh, I just don't want you to uh, be told about what they are without seeing where they came from. I would rather you see uh, see the uh, transition of knowledge step by step. Okay, so if you Look at the top of the page. It should be from here. Is there extra from here? All right, so uh, if you look at the top of the page, you look at a few things right here. So what I didn't want to do is to dump you down, dump you these, uh, these stuff. Okay, I don't want to uh, just feed you with like, okay, guys, just memorize this. I want you to see how we came up with this. So if you want to validate this relationship, just draw a right triangle. Then you understand how sine theta is equal to cosine of 90 degrees minus theta. Or you can also uh, write, down your, write down a quick example. Sine 30 degrees is equal to cosine of 60 degrees. Okay. All right. So, uh, so the rest, it's basically the same thing right here. So take a moment. Uh, try part A and part B yourself. If you uh, 
think uh, 30 seconds would be uh, enough for you. 30 seconds. So uh, sine 10 degrees is the same thing as cosine of 80 degrees. Okay. And cosine of three pi over 14, it's the same thing as sine of pi over two minus uh, three pi over 14. Uh, what should we write over here? It's pi over two, so we should write down seven pi over 14. So I can just show you subtraction. So sine of four pi over 14. Can we uh, put this as the answer? Mm -mm. Why not? Simplify it, gotta simplify it all the time. So it becomes uh, seven pi over, uh, two pi over seven. Sine of two pi over seven. Okay. So. Still dealing with those complementary angles, okay. Uh, but again, try to use some uh, something uh, existing to validate your memory, to validate your knowledge. Now we are dragging some old stuff here. Remember, even function and odd function. I hope uh, it doesn't cause any nightmare of the stuff that we did in the past. Now. Uh, now, I'm not sure if you still remember what odd function is, what even function is, but if you remember what we did, I always ask you to do a couple of things. I ask you to do this. I asked you to draw a couple quick sketches of x squared and x cubed. Can you do that one more time? x squared and x cubed, okay. Go ahead, draw your x square function and x cube function. Okay, x square and x cube. Well, why did I ask you to draw these two functions? How does it help you identify which one is the even, which one is the odd function? And we call this function A. This is the even function, right? So even function is the one that's reflected over the y-axis. And we can easily tell that is an even function because there's, e there's an even number right there. <laughs> there's an even number right there. How can you miss it? There's no way you can miss it. And you know how to draw x squared for so many years. Let's use it. Even function means it's reflected over the y-axis. What about x cubed? It's reflected over the origin. So that's what we call the odd function. Now, as we approach to the graphing of sine function and cosine function, we will see one being an odd function, one being an even function. So now, uh, if you need a calculator, uh, I would suggest you to uh, go ahead and get a calculator right here. And uh, you would use a calculator to uh, type in sine x and cosine x respectively. And when you type it, make sure it is in radian mode. Let's go here. All right, so uh, after you uh, tap it in, I would like you to 
make a couple quick sketches. But uh, before we do the quick sketches, let's start with something that we knew already, we discussed already. Uh, sine zero is what again? Sine zero is zero, right? So sine zero is zero. That means we start at zero, zero. Okay, sine zero is zero. That means we start at zero, zero. And cosine zero is equal to one. That means we start at one. Okay, so now go ahead, make sure your calculator is in the uh, radian mode. Okay, and then we will do the sketch together. Oh, you can do the sketch first. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, so All right, now, so uh, what I expect you to do after class today and before you come to class tomorrow or during class tomorrow, when you come to class tomorrow is that like in the next few days, I'm gonna, when you come to class, I'm gonna ask you to do one, I will ask you to do one thing, sketch y equals to sine x, sketch y equals to cosine x. And after each day, I hope that the resolution, the clarity of the picture, the sketch would be better and better. But for today, I just want you to do one thing. That you know sine x starts from zero, zero. It goes up and down and up. And for cosine x, it starts at the highest point. Okay, it starts at the highest point and then it goes down and it goes up. Now that's a sketch, okay? This is the sketch of uh, these two functions. Can you tell which one's the even function, which one's the odd function? Okay, sine x is the? Odd function. I hope you can see that it's a reflection over the origin. And cosine x is the? even function, okay? And the, uh, the, true, the true or false down below is basically asking you that the left two, the left column, they are both uh, written in the way of an even function. So which one is the even function? Or if you have the graph to show you, our even function is cosine. So choice C would be true, choice A is not because uh, cosine is an even function. Now you should also uh, try to verify it. You should not just uh, follow my notation. If you want to verify it, let's use a simple number to verify it. Let's just say a cosine of pi over three. What's cosine of pi over three? Cosine of pi over three is? One half. Cosine of negative pi over three, which quadrant would it be if it's negative pi over three? Quadrant four, positive or negative for cosine? A, S, P, C, right? So quadrant four, cosine is positive. So cosine of negative pi over three is also one half. Okay, so you wanna verify it. 
just double check that uh, it is indeed an even function. On the right column, okay, it's asking you uh, basically, hey, uh, which function? It's an odd function because uh, they are writing the notations as if uh, it's an odd function. And we say the odd function is the sine function. So uh, this is true. Choice D is not true. Okay. Sine is a sine function. It's an odd function, as you can see from the sketch, as you can see from your own calculator. All right. All right. Now, if you uh, if you have uh, finished your uh, delta math homework, and then people start staring at each other. Uh, I didn't check who did it or who didn't do it yet. I pushed the deadline to tonight. If you are staring at each other, questioning if you have done it or not, well, make sure you finish it by tonight. Okay. Now, so uh, the Delta Math homework is to show you a few, uh, a few graphs, a few looks, some I, uh, some terms right there. So for those who uh, finished the uh, Delta Math homework, can you tell me what? an amplitude is. What's an amplitude? How do we measure the amplitude of a graph? Not from the bottom to the top. It's from the, from the midline to the top or midline to the bottom, okay? Uh, there are multiple ways to describe amplitude, okay? Uh, some people would say, oh, it's the measurement from the bottom to the top and then divided by two, which is the same thing as from the middle to the top or middle to the bottom. So now for sine x, uh, we have the following. It's a never ending graph. So uh, the domain is negative infinity to infinity. The values for sine x is always gonna fluctuate between Negative one to one. I got a question. Why can't sine x exceed one? Why can't sine x exceed one? Why can't sine x be 1.2 or 5 or 100? Why? I'll give you a hint. We go back to square one. Sine theta is opposite of our hypotenuse. And if you know what a right triangle should look like, what is always true of a right triangle? Hypotenuse is the, the longest. Hypotenuse is the longest side. So that means there is no way you have an opposite side that's longer than the hypotenuse. That would be insane. That would not be a right triangle if that's the case. So that's why uh, the range, it's always gonna be in between negative one and one. All right. And uh, so amplitude, it's gonna be from the midline to the highest point. So it's equal to one. Uh, amplitude, it's from uh, midline to the peak, okay, that's how I would, uh, I would label, uh, I would define the amplitude from the midline to the peak. And for, a, for the parent function, y equals to sine x, the midline it's y equal to zero or x axis. Now, uh, I'm not sure, I don't think the uh, Delta math talks about period. Uh, anyone took physics already last year? What's a period? What's a period? The time, the time it takes for one wave. Or we can also look at period as wavelength. You can think about it as wavelength. How long is it? Now for sine graph and cosine graph, for the parent function of uh, sine graph and cosine graph, 
it is always going to be two pi. Now we will change the period as we transform those functions, but originally it's going to be two pi. And now, now here comes the exciting part. I will teach you how to grab it. This lesson is recorded, so if you need to re refresh it, you can also watch the video later on. Now, I'm going to teach you the easiest way possible to make these graphs. I don't know if there's any other method that's easier than this method. So please uh, follow closely. Now, if you want to make graphs very easily, just follow these few steps. First, make sure you know where to start. And that's why I emphasized early on what is sine zero? Zero. Okay, so make your first point accurately. And then understand what a period is. Period is the length of the wave. And one wave, it's one unique pattern. So after you finish the whole wave, it should return to the same spot. So that's where you plot the second point. After two pi, it comes back to the same point. That's the meaning of a period. Now, earlier, early on, I asked you to make a couple of quick sketches, right? So you should know that the graph of a sine x function should look something like this. And from here and on, I want you to utilize the idea of symmetry so now don't draw anything yet i just want you to picture it so it should look something like this it should look something like this so that means in between these two points there must be a point right in the middle symmetry and again, you know the sketch of a sine curve, something like this. So that means in between the first two points right here, you would expect to see the highest point. And the highest point is at y equals to one. Between pi and two pi, right in between pi and two pi, you expect to see the lowest point. So just use the idea of symmetry. And by the way, these values are also the same values that you have learned back in the unit circle. Sine zero is zero, sine of pi over two, one, sine of pi, zero, sine of three pi over two, negative one, sine of two pi, zero. They are the same value. They are the same values. And now this is the most challenging part. And I do need you to do me a one giant favor. Please draw curves, not straight lines. Do your best attempt to draw curves. I don't wanna see uh, straight lines for these graphs. I don't wanna see uh, mountains and valleys. I wanna see waves or more correctly, more accurately, sinusoidal waves. Sinusoidal waves, yes. And then, uh, so that's one single pattern, one single wave. Any questions? Are we good? Now, if you're good, then uh, we just start, we just continue to replicate the graph. So, uh, so it just keep on going. It keeps on going forever. Now, everything should look very symmetrical. If uh, some part of the graph does not look symmetrical to you, then you should double check your graph because it shouldn't be uh, 
asymmetrical. Okay. All right, now, if you're okay with this one, uh, let's look at the, uh, the two questions right here. List one interval that is increasing. So look at this graph, which part of this graph is increasing? Increasing means what? Say again. Still is. Still is positive. Okay, yes. Uh, now, uh, but we, uh, well, if you are in calculus, then you would be able to tell that the slope right here is positive. Or in simpler terms, we can say, well, increasing interval simply means the graph is going up. So it's going up from negative pi over two to pi over two, okay? It's going up from negative pi over two to pi over two. That's just one of the intervals. It has infinite amount of intervals that's increasing. We're just naming one. You can name three pi over two to five pi over two. That's fine too. Can you name one decreasing interval from where to where? From? You can say from pi over two to three pi over two. Pi over two to three pi over two, okay? Now, if you have a highlighter, I will suggest you to highlight this part of the graph. Okay, so, uh, and I'll also highlight the period so that you have a clear idea what is a period. Okay, what is a period? Okay. Now, if you look at the next page, what is the transformation right here? Y equals to sine x plus one. The plus one means the whole graph is shifted up one unit. So originally we start the graph at zero, zero. So that means now it's gonna be zero comma one. Now the two pi, it's still, uh, I mean the period is still two pi. Now the midline, it's gonna be uh, now at y equals to one instead of the x-axis. Well, the period is still two pi. So if this is my first point, my second point to plot is two pi comma one. Okay, again, one period, one cycle. And we will use the image. Okay, we know what the sketch looks like. So, um, so we put a point at pi comma one. So the graph should go up and back to the middle and down. Okay. So that's why uh, I need you, okay, to be very familiar with a quick sketch of a sine graph and a cosine graph. If you cannot do this, uh, the outlook is not optimistic at all. And then we start uh, replicating the pattern. All right, so domain, all real numbers, range, uh, not negative one to one, but in this case, zero to two inclusive, okay? So uh, the amplitude, what's the amplitude in this case? You can write down, what's the amplitude in this case? Amplitude is still, is still one. 
Okay. The amplitude is still one. All right. Now, uh, for cosine graph down there, cosine graph uh, right here, we start at zero comma one, and uh, period is still two pi. So uh, that means after two pi units, it returns to the same spot. And if you know the graph that we sketched on the previous page, it starts at the highest point and it ends at the highest point. So right in the middle of these two highest points, we should ex expect to see the lowest point. Okay, so the graph is like this. And uh, between the highest point and the lowest point, we should see the graph hitting the, the midline. So, so that's one cycle, okay? The very first pattern that you would draw. And once you have the first pattern, first pattern drawn, then you can uh, go ahead and replicate the pattern. Okay, left and right. Oops. Right now, try the graph at home. You can uh, you can just uh, put it to your graphing calculator or put it on any uh, website that gives you a graph to see the shape. Just make sure that it is in a radian mode. 